At first I wanted to name this film Failure, but that feels a little overly dramatic. I think I've gotten really lucky with my fishing trips over the past couple of years of working with Flycraft. It feels like almost every trip that I've been able to go out on, I've always been with an incredibly talented angler who was able to bring in numbers of fish. And for me as a filmmaker trying to document a fishing trip, obviously makes my job incredibly easy when there are high numbers of fish. And those numbers stand for the first time that I filmed with Jake Flood back uh, last year when we were out filming in Arkansas. The, the fishing was just on, it was just working. He knew exactly what bug pattern to use and he knew exactly what depth he needed at that. And like, we were able to pull in really beautiful fish. It didn't work that way in Idaho, not even close. Little rubber legs nymph, you know, and then we're gonna get a little jig action, maybe some worms today, you know, maybe some eggs, some midges. Stuff like that, winter water. <laughs> it's cold as shit out here. This film's kind of a step away from the standard fishing film. This is a film with pretty much no fish in it. We spent three days on the water and hit four different rivers and it, it just didn't work. The first day we were in way over our heads. The first day we decided that we were gonna take uh, the fly crafts down the south fork of the snake. We're gonna be fine, we're in rafts, but um, it's pretty gnarly. It's like a three and a half foot drop into a rapid. Um, and there's some big boils that we'll watch out for. There's one left bend called Devil's Bend, and uh, you just don't wanna get stuck in that boil. You can either hug it really tight inside of the bank or just ride the wave train around it, but I'll lead. I'll make sure I flag you down or something before we go through that, because it is a little sketchy. But everything else is very straightforward. It's very straightforward rowing, nothing too complicated. We had the Stealth 2.0 with us. That's what we put Jake in. And then me, Pete, and another angler were in the Stealth X. The South Fork of the Snake, being that it's such a powerful and large river with such big lines between your eddy section and your current section, you get these big spiraling boils. I think I, I think I just blindly trusted you last night. With what? What we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was yeah. trusting Mother Nature to not do that to us today, <laughs> but it did exactly what I feel. The highest winds I've ever been in on the river, for sure. Both Jake and Pete are both kind of thinking that winds were upwards of 40 miles per hour. That's a lot of headwind coming at you when you're in a raft, for sure. Um, especially when you're in a pretty small raft on a very large river, when you have a big amount of current coming underneath your boat and you have a really high wind stream coming this way at your boat, what it does is it tips your boat like no matter which way you are. It just completely twists you flat and then tips you over. And so like it's a really precarious situation to be in with such a big difference between river speed and wind speed. I never really felt like we were close to tipping because every time the person on oars, they were just really talented on oars. They, they kept the boat really, really well dialed down that big stream. Um, but it's like very clear that it's not a stream for beginners. It's not a stream, it's a, it's a huge river. It's a massive river. We were only able to fish for maybe the first two hours of the day. And I think we did catch a fish. There might be drone footage of it, but like it's really quick and the fish is off. I, don't, I doubt we even landed it or netted it or anything. I think it just popped off and that was it. Entire action of the entire day, other than the insane amounts of Cindy that we had. We got really, really lucky that Jake being the ridiculously talented oarsman that he is, like hauls the 2.0 boat all the way through this raging wind, just, you know, big old meat swings, basically. Had we been 30 seconds later to that takeout, or had Jake been 30 seconds later to getting his raft out to that takeout, he wouldn't have caught the shuttle car, you know? Like they would have been down the road and we would have had another eight miles left to go, which that wind was just doing nothing but picking up and picking up.
Day two was more frustrating, but much, much slower. Yeah, you know, we're on the Henry Ford, <laughs> and uh, it's windy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got some chocolate water, so we're probably gonna try to get him on some nymphs here to start, and uh, maybe run another float, and see if it's happening this evening for us up top. That's, that's the SpongeBob right there, man. That's the SpongeBob? That's the SpongeBob. You can float a car under you. Yeah, man. Oh. SpongeBob down. <laughs> SpongeBob down. I mean, shit, it's, what is it, like still nine in the morning, maybe? Yeah, about that. Yeah, we're good. We're chilling. We're chilling. It's a beautiful stretch of river um, with some incredible water. And we had planned so hard to have this trip line up with these three days in hopes of catching the uh, Drake hatch out there because it's just a prolific hatch. I've seen it once, but I was a ridiculously terrible new fly fisherman. So I, like I'd legitimately caught one or two fish throughout the course of the entire like green Drake hatch. But I had seen what other real fishermen can do with it. And it's, it's a sight to behold. It's really, really cool to see all of like the bugs coming in and out of the water. It's really, really insane. And so that's what we were hoping to have on this stretch of river and nothing. Quiet as can be. It may not just be our day. You may just have to enjoy the water and the sunshine. I don't think we had a strike. I don't think we had anything, not a twitch. And so we pulled the boats out, got them shuttled up, and then drove them straight up to the Teton and went and floated that and did a quick little section of that because, I mean, the Teton is beautiful. There's, that's one of those rivers that you should just go float down it because it's absolutely fun. You know, like it doesn't matter if you catch any fish. I've been told that there's huge fish in there and that there's some really beautiful cutthroats and stuff that you can find in them. I have yet to witness any fish really come out of that thing that aren't, you know, like that big. So I don't know. Go float it because it's beautiful. Don't go float it because you want to catch a horse. This day kind of just echoed that exact same sentiment. We were we were on there for five or six hours, really working every single run, trying to swap bug patterns, really changing depths, changing everything that we could do to try and pull anything out of there. I think Cole did get one, so props to him. That's the thing, they're really, really good anglers. I've seen them work. I've seen what they can do out in Arkansas, but sometimes it literally just doesn't even matter how good of an angler you are if nothing's biting, if just if nature's turned off, you know? And that's how the Teton was. It was so slow. Beautiful, gorgeous. Saw some moose, saw a bunch of birds, right up by the mountains. I mean, you couldn't ask for better, but man, in terms of like a, this is gonna be a kick-ass fishing film, Nope, <laughs> really not, sorry. So if you're here looking for big amounts of fish, we don't have them. This is gonna be the most boring film I've ever done. Day three, we go back to Henry's Fork. And this time, the game plan is to sketch out there pretty early, get set up, find a little nook that we can hunker down in, and kind of be a way of the standard like guide flow traffic, and just wait. Just sit there the entire day, watch the water, watch the bugs, watch the temperature, watch the weather system, like watch everything. Just wait for that hatch to hit. Like, you know what? If we gotta be on the water for 16 hours, we'll be on the water for 16 hours. We fished every single nook and cranny of that entire fishery. We couldn't pull a single thing out. We had, we talked with a bunch of the guys that got off the river that exact same band. They're like, dude, we don't, even, it's, it is quiet as can be out here. It's absolutely graveyard still. So yeah, that's about it. We went up to Idaho, we fished like hell. We went down a really big river, had a shit ton of wind, caught one, maybe two fish. It was wonderful. It was so much fun. I, I had a blast the entire time. It was such a riot just to be out there on the water with Jake and Cole. Like everything about the time spent out there is just like, dude, you guys are doing exactly what you love. This is, this is you guys at your core and I love it. They're so much fun to be around there. It's so fun to listen to their banter and their chatter about what bugs to pick and what's going on in the water and like just kind of always just dogging on each other. Bombinos, Alaflaya. 
Maybe we do big orange, yellow. Do this one. Big orange, yellow, and then green. Triple? Yeah, the Christmas lights, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Just worm. 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 Orange. You know? Worm, 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 worm. worm, worm. <laughs> so just worm and worm. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's pretty yeah, dope. You yeah, Kev, what up, bro? <laughs> I don't think you can hear him. I don't think you can either, maybe. No, I feel like we would have gotten some sort of reaction from him. The beadhead worm, and then just heavy, heavy mop in the middle, and then I'm gonna do something really light off the bottom. Yeah, so we did run a triple. I'm going flashback pheasant tail. A midge. A <laughs> midge? Yeah. yeah, bro, the water's like 44 degrees right now. Hit him, hit him, hit him! <laughs> yeah, no, that convergence right there might be stacked. Let's go check that out. Fishing people are the worst people to put a mic on. Yeah, I know, it's a pretty brutal idea. Oh. Is that a broken rod? Oh. <laughs> They're not gonna be able to use much of this audio. <laughs> they just love it out there. They're always having so much fun. You can really tell that like, they're not out here because they're trying to do something. They're, they're just doing nothing. They're just, they're just fishing. They're just out here having a good time. They don't care if they get into a whole bunch of fish. Like, I don't think that even really upset their day at all. Yeah, they get incredibly excited and stoked when fish do hit. We all do. It's lightning in the veins. It's fun as hell. But man, like you can go out there and just spend the entire three days out there on a whole bunch of rivers and not catch a single thing. And it's still a damn good time out there. If the goal of this film was to come out with a super banger highlight fish reel, yeah, this is a big failure. <laughs> but if the purpose of this film is just spend time out in nature with people that enjoy spending time out in nature. Well, I'm kind of, yeah, <laughs> call it a success. Uh, I, th I still think we're gonna name the film Failure.